<laughs> hey guys, you have to make sure you're standing in the right spot, at the right place, at the right time, and the wind's blowing just right, and we're live. <laughs> so I see a couple people in here, a couple likes already, yay! <laughs> you guys beat me. So, how are ya? So, I just got here actually, and horses are like, let us out of here. So let me, let me shut this gate here so we can let stangs be free. <laughs> and there's a Sally. <laughs> hey, enjoy being. Yay. I'm excited we're, sorry. <laughs> So we gotta get to this content and stuff. I was debating coming out here today because the wind is just crazy all the time this time of day. And I almost debated going live at my office. Here, let's turn it around and see some horses. There's one, hi. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, no, we just, we just can't go live in the office because that wouldn't be the right atmosphere. And my office is across town, so. It takes a bit of time to get here. And there's Sally. All right, two Mustangs are free. Yep, Juno. <laughs> so it looks like we're, we're good and live because we see a Juno. <laughs> that's right, that's Juno. And then we gotta let these Salem, Sally Lynn. <laughs> yeah, and then we gotta let the boys free and they can do their usual yard work around here. <laughs> eating all the not so good plants. Here's Sailor and Troy. Troy, Sailor. <laughs> and last week we had a little introduction of all these guys and hopefully the reception's still keeping up with us cruising around the lot a little bit here. Boys. <laughs> so let's see. So how is everybody today? <laughs> I'm thinking I, um, four o'clock seems to be the windiest time of day. So I don't know if I will change it or not, or just stick out with it. Whoa, thanks for the first super chat, Robin Inglesong. Wow. Wow, I was not expecting that. <laughs> Thank you, and how are you? <laughs> Yay. Wow. <laughs> well, okay, that answers the question if that's working because I was <laughs> I forgot about it and enjoy being remembered and and I don't know if it was up to you you guys were testing me. <laughs> but wow, okay, thank you. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> okay, so today's today's live stream, I think we should so yeah, so today's live stream is about how to get a Mustang. So I got my little Mustang garb on <laughs> and it's kind of windy. So I'm trying to figure out where to put these notes because I need notes because my memory is not the best. You forgot to check. So Robin's done good. <laughs> Did you tell her? <laughs> I forgot even myself. <laughs> Yay, glad you're here. So um, maybe I should get the tripod. Yeah, so we're just kind of starting the ranch in here. <laughs> and how's the wind the wind sound going? Cause today we're gonna learn all about how to get a Mustang. And if it's really, really bad, I might chill out in my outdoor office, which is the Prius. <laughs> Um, I could go in my messy tack room, but I'm a little embarrassed. I'd rather go in the messy Prius office. <laughs> Hardly any wind. Okay, cool. Okay, so I remember I locked up my tripod. <laughs> Joy being keeps you up to date from across the world. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I think a tripod would be helpful because then I can show you what I'm hearing because it's kind of uh, important because they're talking about the United States um, federal land horses. So this is their logo and stuff. So you can see the hat, that's their logo. And so 
we'll get organized. <laughs> now, uh, probably most everybody here knows what a Mustang is. <laughs> and if you don't, that is, remember that you're on, <laughs> yay. Yeah, so if you don't know what a Mustang is, basically that is a wild horse from the um, wildlands. And the wildlands consist of 10 western states here in the United States. Hey, coffee and create, you found me. So we're shuffling and getting all this technology together so I can be a little bit more hands-free. Okay, so <laughs> here's the part where I have to like cover the camera. <laughs> I think so if you get dizzy close your eyes I have to spin you around on this tripod here it's not um, it doesn't okay as, as ranch people go we use what we can use and sometimes it's a little funky <laughs> okay all right uh, maybe one more spin get a little more on there okay we good yeah all right so let's make it a little taller and then you can see tallness. Let's go up. Better. <laughs> so I'm gonna step over. Oh, we got a we got a Troy. <laughs> Horse ambience. Getting on computer. Okay. So this is a shirt that <clears throat> you get when you adopt a wild horse. So they gave me this hat because I got two horses last year. One was a little baby Mustang and, and you're, you're a quick learner. You're getting this. <laughs> we try it. <laughs> so they gave me this hat. They said, what kind of hat did you want? And I picked the green one. I liked the green one because we got green around here. And then they gave me this orange shirt. I think this, actually this might've been Raven's shirt. So I adopted Mustang Raven. It says, it says, I love wild ones because they is wild Mustangs. <laughs> and then here's the logo on the side, the, uh, the horse and the burrow. So it's, it's wild horses and burrows. And then what does the back say? I forgot what it says. You have to tell me. Can you read it? <laughs> kind of forgot what it says. <laughs> Probably like I love wild ones or something, but wild horse and burrow. So, that is the logo for the <laughs> the Wild Horse and Burrow uh, BLM. And I never say this right. I should have probably asked my mom. Burrow, Burrow, I Burrow. I think it's Burrow, Burrow, <laughs> Bur Bureau, Bureau of Land Management. Don't hate me for it. <laughs> I know how to spell it, <laughs> but uh, it's just a hard word to say. And for me, um, so anyway, that is the. Uh, organization responsible for managing wild horses on public lands and so we're gonna be talking about how to get a Mustang I think I should get some horses in the background or something or a little more nature they're all in the corner <laughs> now if I go too far without my notes I'll, I'll forget what we're saying <laughs> okay we can ex we can expect this <laughs> What's important, folks, is that you show up on time and do the best you can to prepare. And sometimes life is life, but show up on time. <laughs> so let's go over here with the horses because we're talking about horses. Okay, there's all, all of them over. Oops, hello. <laughs> all of them are over here. Tilt you back up. Ta -da. Horses. <laughs> okay. Is this good? We see some. We see one. I have to slouch a little bit. My tripod's not that tall. Unless I tilt it up a little bit. Here we go. This little patch, kids. Yes. <laughs> this little patch, kids. Okay. That's good. We're good, we're good. I have notes. <laughs> Just to keep my thoughts organized. So I all day, all day, I've been working on this content, just trying to get all the information out there for you guys. And 
so I came up with a few questions. I think there is about one, two, I think up to five or so. Um, but this is just a bunch of notes. So like, yeah, I think we got like five questions to answer about how to get Mustangs. So oh, that's a Mustang. <laughs> Mustang Sailor, Mustang Juno. I think the closest one is Mustang Sally, but, <laughs> and uh, me who brings them all here and works works my hardest. Uh, I know pandemic and everything changed kind of how we go these, you know, how it goes. <laughs> We're all in quarantine or shelter in place and social distancing and all that. So. We're just doing what we can do, but I can tell you how it used to be getting a wild horse before all of that happened. And I could tell you a little bit of how things changed as, as it happened. So I am Monica Krause and <laughs> I created United Mustangs of America and where we teach about Mustangs and horsemanship and how to make a great home for a Mustang that needs a home. And we'll just go into a little bit about all of that about the Mustang story and all that fun stuff. So the question I get is, I don't know if this is like the best order of questions <laughs> as we unfold, but we'll, we'll see how it rolls. So the first one I just started my notes with was where do you get a Mustang? And so basically there's a few places actually. And as I did my research, I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, there and there. <laughs> and so obviously, you get a Mustang at the BLM government holding facilities. And so those are in speckled in the 10 Western states and I've actually, I got a list of them. So I can actually say, and I, I didn't have time to put all the links and stuff in the description, but when I'm done here, I'll put like links and stuff where you can get information. So if you're watching the replay right now, then you will check out all the links and uh, get the exact information on where to go from the BLM websites and they kind of have long links so <laughs> we didn't get that far but we got notes so here we go <laughs> so obviously you get them at the BLM uh, in person but you have to nowadays uh, make an appointment yeah Bureau of Land Management BLM thanks enjoy being <laughs> and if I'm saying that wrong I apologize I probably am that first word um, so yeah, and then they also have right now, like our, they always had it, but they're especially running this way now, which is the uh, online adoption corrals. And so I think they have some like on Facebook, you can, uh, not Facebook, the um, YouTube. <laughs> on YouTube, you can go on YouTube and find like videos and watch little video clips of each one of the horses they're offering on their online adoption. So you can see that and then they'll put the little number of the horse and then you can uh, either bid on it if they're doing a bid thing kind of thing or if they're just doing an adoption and the only way they're opening up their offices over there with the corrals to public is if you already adopted a horse and it used to be that you would go there and this was even a couple of years ago because they've changed things over the years so you used to be able to go five days a week Monday through Friday you know make an appointment go there and pick pick out a horse and um, then this last year, they chunked it down to only two days out of the whole month. And you had to do like an open house adoption. So you run out to the corrals and you go with your scope out there and you go, I like that guy. <laughs> and then you run back to the office and you say, put him on the board, first come, first serve. So that's the way they did it last year. And then they were gonna do it again like that this year. And I had a whole sheet in my fridge of the days that they pick two times a year, at least for the local area near me, which is Ridgecrest, California. So that's how they were, were running it. And it might be a little different in different um, states. So your granddad would love to see the horse in person. <laughs> hey, T. Dillard. <laughs> um, so yeah. No, sorry, I get distracted easily. <laughs> Okay, so you, you can do the adoption events and all those types of things. And the only way you can go there and pick up a horse is if you have already adopted it online. So another way you can get a Mustang is being finding a tip trainer. So T-I-P, or is it T-I-P, <laughs> whichever way it goes <laughs> for you guys. Um, so that is a trainer 
trainer incentive program that the Mustang Heritage Foundation, which is a nonprofit, they organize that, um, you know, uh, for the trainers. I can apply, I can be one of those trainers, and they would pay me $1,000 per horse that I successfully get the requirements met. So that means the horse would have to be able to pick up all four feet, load in a trailer, and be led. So if those three things can be met, because these are wild horses, right? They, they come off the, the, the lot completely untouched and don't want to be touched and wild. So there needs to be kind of a middle person that tames the horses before they can get a home. So those are tip trainers. So that's another way you can get a Mustang. So if you are not the, um, what do you call it? An experienced trainer, <laughs> you know, and you don't know how to do the gentling process and you need a little help getting started, go find a tip trainer and there's a website, Mustang Heritage Foundation, and I think they have a whole list of tip trainers. Yeah, the tip training. So that's another way to get Mustangs. And I opted not to do that program because I created my own program. <laughs> so I go ahead and get my own Mustangs and then I have my students and we learn together how to train that horse as he gets trained. And then at the end, if a student should fall in love with them, they adopt or buy them from me and they have their best life. So that's, that's how I run my program. So that's what United Mustangs of America is about. So I opted not to do the tip training exactly because I had my own program and I get paid the same, <laughs> if not more. <laughs> and it's a better um, outcome because the tip training, you still have to find a trainer. You still have to know what you're doing. You still have to learn the horsemanship and you still have to be you know, <laughs> a good owner for that horse. So with my program, we become that good owner, you know, in the process. Yeah, so there's the link there. Thanks. <laughs> and, um, okay, another way is the Mustang makeover. So Sally, I think I should move a little bit because <laughs> <laughs> sticker bushes, gotta watch out. Okay, because you kind of see them a little bit. I don't know how they're all in there, in the sticker bushes. <laughs> they're all in there. <laughs> okay, so this one actually closest. So we're talking about Sally. Now she was a Mustang makeover horse. And uh, let's see if I can angle it where we can, I'm not totally blocking her. Ah. <coughs> okay, I should have brought water. <laughs> All right, so uh, the Mustang makeover horse. So she was, was that. She was my first 100 day horse. So the Extreme Mustang makeover, I'll try to sum it up uh, shortly. So it is a competition that still, again, the Mustang Heritage Foundation puts on. And it's, it's a competition where trainers are invited to compete and you get a horse all on the same day at the same facility at the same time <laughs> and they just give you a random draw so they go mix all your names in a hat pull a number and that's your horse so that's Sally so they pulled my name for Sally and when I saw her I was like "Ooh, she's so beautiful <laughs> And I was like, wow, that's my horse. So, but she wasn't mine. So the whole thing with the Mustang, the Extreme Mustang Makeover is that at the end of the show, the horse goes to an auction. So it's a public auction at the end. So the trainers train these horses for 100 days, heart and soul poured out in these horses, make them the best thing and win the competition. And we also win money if we win. So that's a good incentive. <laughs> and then the horses go to auction and the trainers actually get half of the money of the auction. So um, it's common courtesy. So I didn't know if I was gonna keep her or not. I was kind of like, if, they, if I sell her for a lot of money, I'll sell her. If I don't make money, then I'll keep her. But my heart kind of like made me do this. So I bid. <laughs> I, it was the saddest thing. I was in the middle of the arena we were at the top 10. Sally and I were just sitting there so sad. And I'm like, nope, my horse. So we bid up to $1,000. I got half of that money back. So I only had to pay 500 and I actually won $700 being eighth place. And so with the differences worked out, I got $100 a horse and a belt buckle because I got a rookie champion <laughs> that year. So 
That was my first makeover. I did the best out of all the rookies and we got a Sally. So everybody loves Sally, right? <laughs> awesome, watching on TV. <laughs> okay, so that's the Mustang makeover. So you can go to one of those auctions and pick out one of those horses. And now those horses may cost a lot. So uh, they don't cost the original amount that they do from the BLM. Uh, they cost a lot more. So it depends on the bidding, the audience, and the desirability, how much that goes up, right? <laughs> and the location. I know Texas pulls in some good, good bills. <laughs> but a wonderful story, yeah. So that's the Mustang Sally, and that's her story, but that's the story linked to Makeover. So that's another way you can get a Mustang. And um, so you have to be the auction attendee. Now, if you are a trainer, you still have to bid on your own horse, and that's what I had to do. So. Um, okay, so there's another way, which is the prison training uh, training programs. So I think they made a, a movie recently, forgive me, I th think the title is Mustang. It could be just Mustang. And I know like my people in the community don't have a very good review on the movie because of the dramatics and stuff. <laughs> but um, anyway, it would kind of explain that there's a program. and inmates train mustangs and one of my conrads in the makeover competitions he does he's the head he's the manager of the prison uh uh thing the uh, prison training program for inmates <laughs> is what i'm trying to say <laughs> so um yeah so you can get them through there and what they do is kind of something similar to the makeover so they have different auctions and they'll have like a way to get the horses like events at certain times of the year and stuff and my friend posts a lot of stuff on his facebook so he kind of posts like little progress reports and stuff from the mustangs that are out there that he's working on and there's other there's lots more than just his program <clears throat> which i found today <laughs> <laughs> and another way to get a Mustang is go on Facebook. There's actually, I gotta figure out why the sun is like shining on me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so another way to um, get a Mustang is go on Facebook groups. So uh, you could just type in Mustang adoption or something and you'll find like tons of Mustang groups that are all about finding a Mustang there and stuff. Inmates training horses now, ironic, yeah, that, that's a whole story of its own. And I think it's really cool because, yeah, there's a lot, that's a whole other story of its own. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I've been, Coffee and Crate's been horse crazy. You play Star Stable so much, you miss the horses. Oh, man. <laughs> well, here's the horses. It's the best I can do for you, kiddo. <laughs> All right, so that is five ways to get a Mustang. And so I have other now kind of topics towards around getting Mustangs. And um, basically they're just kind of questions like, where do they come from? <laughs> where are Mustangs coming from? So um, now I'm just gonna kind of skim over my note because I was gonna put in a really cool link for that. So look for this link down below later when I can go back and click on stuff when I'm not outside. <laughs> And uh, there will be a cool link in there and it will lead to um, adoption sales and adoption centers. Oh, Instagram too, maybe. But Facebook has groups. So in the Facebook groups, you'll see like um, people post Mustangs that are for adoption and they'll have like the trainer incentive program group too. So Facebook has all that stuff. And so like if I was a trainer, for the trainer incentive program, I would post Mustangs in there that I'm working on, and then they would get like seen by people who are looking for them. So if you're looking for one, go over there. <laughs> okay, so let's see. So basically, where do they come from? So Mustangs come from the federal lands. And now the BLM <laughs> manages 10 Western states. And, um, hey Crystal. And so the 10 Western states I have listed here, so I can actually read them off because I usually just say it's 10 Western states that the horses come from, but it is, I think it's alphabetical order. So Arizona, California, Colorado, Idaho, Illinois, Kansas, Nebraska, flip the page, <laughs> Nevada, which is the biggest area, uh, Oklahoma, 
Oregon, Utah, and Wyoming. So those are, actually I think that's like 12, but those are extra <laughs> because of the training facilities. But yeah, so there, there is, that's 10 Western states that they come from. So BLM rounds them up. Now you can read on that link the whole story in detail, but basically I don't want to get into politics too much, but they just round them up because of, you know, keep, my short answer is what they should be doing <laughs> is rounding up Mustangs so lands don't get overgrazed. So the reason I don't keep these guys out here a hundred percent of the time is because I don't want it to go to complete dust like the corral is behind you. <laughs> so they live in a, you know, they, the horses are really not that good for environment. Um, and we also need to make sure there's enough food out there for them and water and all that kind of good stuff and, you know, that they're healthy. Yay! <laughs> Thanks, Coffee and Great. So, so that's what the BLM is supposed to do. So now with the idea that they're supposed to be rounding them up to keep them healthy, you know, they round up with helicopters, load them in the trucks and in, in the chutes and into trucks and trailers, and then they ship them all the way to what we call the holding facilities. So these holding facilities are in all of those states and I could read them off or I could just put them all in the links, but um, cause there's quite a bit, I can even just show them. <laughs> there's all these. <laughs> all these. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we got, we have actually three in California, and so we have California people, it's Litchfield, Wild Horse and Burrow Off-Range Corral, Ridgecrest Regional Wild Horse and Burrow Corrals. That's where I've got Sally. Must go posted a link on Facebook. Cool, thank you. So we got, um, thanks for being here and everything. So Sally came from, actually all three of my Mustangs came from Ridgecrest. <laughs> and let's see, I know the, Nevada one, and then the Nevada one, there's Palomino. I know the sunshine kind of shining. <laughs> Palomino Valley, that's also where I got other Mustangs for competitions. So I went up there two times for two different competitions. I don't want to go that far being a Californian again. <laughs> and that's because I had to do the closest makeover, which was in Reno. So, yeah. <laughs> now, so I'll, I'll link all that stuff in there if you guys are really interested um, in all the exact locations and stuff and yeah. Okay, so here's the next question. So how much do they cost? So put it in chat if you know. <laughs> how much did this hippopotamus and can you see that one over there? That half a hippopotamus. And the other one, I can't see too good. I think, think I'm pointing at one over there. That hippopotamus. How much did they cost? <laughs> what was their adoption fee? So there's actually two, two costs. So you can, yes, so that's one of them. So Sailor, so, so T. Dillard got Sailor's cost right. So $25, and that's because we went over the store yesterday on my other channel. <laughs> so Sailor over there. So good, good memory, good memory <laughs> over there it cost $25. And that was not an adoption fee. That was a sale authority fee. So the other one, what's the other fee? You guys know? My, my camera is getting really dim. I can't see the horses there, but I think there's one. <laughs> so there's another fee. So if you just put this number in front of the 25, close. So yeah, good guess, good guess. A lot, <laughs> not too much. Um, now maybe for your allowance, a lot, <laughs> but um, one twenty-five. So one two five. <laughs> one twenty-five <laughs> is how much the adoption fees are. So good guess, guys. Um, and so the so now there's that's two different statuses with the. Um, getting of horses so when the, it's hundred and twenty five dollars that means the horse is up for adoption and the adoption requirements are a little bit different than sale authority in other words meaning if your horse if you get your horse it's still not your horse <laughs> so even though you signed all the yeah 125 so even though you signed all the paper paperwork and took your horse to your facility and have it you are really an extension of the BLM 
it is still government property for a whole year after bringing it home. And so after that whole year under your care, you have to prove you're a worthy owner for that horse. So after that year, you, you're a good horse. It hasn't gone back to the BLM jail <laughs> and uh, you know, no complaints against you or whatever, and the horse is healthy. Then you get title of that horse. So both Juno and Sally, the two girls, I have their title. So they were adoptions. So I didn't own them for the first year. I had to prove myself as an owner with those horses. And so now this case with um, Sailor, where is he? I can't, I don't, I can't see too good. He's in there somewhere. He's, he's on this side. <laughs> anyway, the case with Sailor, he was sale authority. So he was just $25. And the reason I like to get sale authority for my program is because it's your horse out the door. So there's no going like, eh, it didn't work out, he's too wild, send him back. So you can't give him back, it's done, it's your horse. And so you don't have to wait for a year to get title. You could turn him around, you know, gentle him up, train him up a little bit and, you know, get him a home. And so that works for my program because, you know, if my students work on him and want the horse, then I can offer him up a new home. So a lot quicker than a whole year and all that, um, which is yay. <laughs> and uh, so that's why I get sale authority. Now, to be a sale authority processed horse, that means they had to offer up that horse three times. And in the past, it used to be a horse that has been adopted three times and brought back three times. And so that's like a risky horse, right? It didn't work out three times, too wild, untrainable, unmanageable, brought back to jail. And so, it used to be, hey, if you want that horse, it's just 25 bucks, take it, keep it, you know, there you go. Um, but that's not the case exactly anymore with the way things are going. So now they kind of work the paperwork around where if the horse is offered up three times, it's like three times a strike, right? So if it's offered up three times in, at an adoption, uh, like a, an event or something or open house and it didn't get adopted that day they just put a strike on it and I'm sorry Mr. Jack because I was explaining but so they put a strike on their um, paperwork and if it gets you know three strikes then it's just a sale authority horse so I like those horses and it's kind of more lenient it's not that he was an unruly horse and got brought back three times it's just because the way they do things now, they had about three adoption events where he was offered and they didn't, nobody adopted him, which is just fine because there's a lot of horses and not so many adopters. So that happens. Let's see. Do we still see horses? Am I covering the horses? <laughs> so that, that's, that's how much they cost and that's what all that means. And not, not everybody knows about that. It's kind of like interesting information which changes it seems like <clears throat> okay so that's how much they cost good um, next question so <clears throat> all right you got your money <laughs> you got your desire I want a horse you know kind of about you know about them a little bit you know where they come from you know how to get one so <clears throat> when you do get one what do you need right so the question is requirements for housing and adopting <clears throat> they love the thistle bush is, is my is my green screen entertaining <laughs> entertaining green screen <laughs> yeah, you see them cool okay so there, there's your there's our little herd <laughs> okay so requirements for housing and adopting now does anybody know how tall the fence needs to be so you get a wild horse they're not going to just let you keep it in any type of corralling how tall does the fence need to be does anybody know you might know this coffee and crate. You might. <laughs> I'll give you a few seconds. Just throw any number out there. I don't care if you say ice cream. Just say something. <laughs> Just take a guess. Now, five feet, five feet, six feet. Crystal got it. Yes, six feet. <laughs> she Googles it real fast. <laughs> yes, six feet. So the reason with that, now it used to be much, much taller. Yeah, six feet. So, no, not eight feet, but eight feet's not bad. Like you can have eight feet, <laughs> but six feet minimum, right? So I'm, I'm actually five, eight. So it'd be just a little taller than me. 
type of fencing. And so obviously the reason for that is because if the horses can get their front legs over, the rest of them can come over. <laughs> so we don't want free galloping wild horses that can't be caught and touched and you need, you need real wranglers and the chances are they aren't around. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't want to have that. So you need your really tall and very durable fencing ice cream. <laughs> yeah, so good guess. <laughs> if you don't know, just say ice cream. <laughs> so uh, six feet high and it can't be like weak, flimsy kind of uh, fencing. It has to be a really sturdy gauge because if those horses go slamming, kicking and doing funky stuff to it, it's got to hold, right? You need that thing to hold together. <laughs> So we have that over there and we'll, we could show you later. Um, but it's, it's a six foot high fence. And now there's also a square footage requirement. Anybody want to guess how big the area it should be? What's the minimum? So the question is, what's the minimum square feet? And you could give dimensions or the whole square footage. If you don't know, just say ice cream. I'll tell you. <laughs> you have to give me some kind of guess for me for to get the answer. <laughs> 250 really good guess really good really good we'll see if anybody else can try to get it it's real that's really warm i'll give that a hint <laughs> i know you're out there i know you're out there <laughs> just two more guesses 251 <laughs> hey moss cider <laughs> Now that's going in the other direction, but it's not wrong. You can always have more. Price is right. <laughs> Stretch. <laughs> so that's going more. Ice cream. Okay, so we got our three, three of you guys. So the minimum wasn't paying attention. Two, two, two. So enjoy being as closest. <laughs> Good guess. <gasps> Moss Cider's got it. Did you Google it? <laughs> okay, so Moss Cider, you're right, 200 square feet. So that means a 20 foot by 20 foot area that you need to have for a minimum space. <laughs> you win. <laughs> you win. <Ta> -da! <laughs> so um, now it has to be strong fencing, of course, and it needs to be a tw a that much space. So what I have over there is a very, very durable uh, steel tubing and it's six feet high. In fact, I, they, were, they used to be five feet and then we um, refurbished it to being six feet. So I've actually mod uh, modified my corral to meet the requirement. So we welded on an extra foot uh, height and um, they're actually 24 by 24. So it, it gives us, what is that, two? I'm not good at math, that 240. So, so, uh, what you guys first guessed 250 was close to what I actually have, <laughs> but the minimum requirement is 200. So yeah. And then, okay. So you got your fencing, right? So you got your tall fence. You're going to get a Mustang. Yay. You got your tall fence. It's really huge. You can't like go get a horse if you got nowhere to put them. So you need that. And then your next thing that you need to get the horse is a trailer. So what you now, I didn't know, but there's just a few little things about that, getting a trailer. So the BLM does not want you to show up with a trailer with a ramp. So I don't know if you've seen horse trailers, but some trailers have like a swinging door like mine. So just kind of a big door and it opens and you go, you step up into the trailer. Now some trailers have these things like a ramp and they, they, they go down and then the horse kind of walks up into a ramp. Now those are really hazardous to picking up Mustangs because, um, First of all, you're backing up your trailer to a chute, like cattle. So you gotta back it up there, you're gonna swing open the door and then it's gotta fly in there. And so if you have this ramp thing, it can cause problems and you can't get close up to the thing and you can't shut the, the uh, back of your trailer in real fast and then you got a mess. So they want to just have that swinging door, no ramp and just a step up into the trailer. And now on the inside of your trailer, it can't have any, um, like swinging dividers or anything obtrusive. It's just gotta be an open box. So you have to have an open box trailer with a step up and then, oh yeah, like no slip mats. So it's gotta have nice rubber mats on the bottom, no slip, nice and durable. Cause 
if you see my trailer, there is some dents in that thing. <laughs> I don't know how they do it, <laughs> but they're just, as soon as you pull off the lot with a horse, it's, it's kind of like wild shows, like bam, 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 kick, kick, stomp, stomp. And then they settle down as you start driving. But if you're kind of hanging around, talking to your friends and your horse is loaded up and he's like, I gotta get somewhere. <laughs> so they usually settle up by the time you get to a gas station. But uh, yeah, so you need that type of trailer. And so that's why I got the trailer that I have, so I can pick up Mustangs. And, oh, this, 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 this I didn't prepare, but we, we need, we need an example. I think I could go grab one, which I should, because this is important. Okay, so we're going to go look for this other thing. So the next thing that you need is a halter. <laughs> Bridle, yes, <laughs> close. So it's not a bridle because that is the actual thing that you, I'm gonna figure out where my keys went to. <laughs> little, started off a little interesting. So, we'll wait. <laughs> You're coming with me, it's okay. <laughs> halter. Yeah, so it's spelled H-A-L-T-E-R. So halter, um, let me check my car first before we, walking everywhere wherever my keys went <laughs> keys when you have a lot of stuff it goes everywhere yeah lead with a halter exactly auto correct <laughs> halter that's right coffee and create perfect so now yeah this is important because i i want to show the two types of halters and i'm not the only one that's going to say this in the mustang world and um now, if you're not a Mustang trainer and haven't been through some serious training, <laughs> you're gonna be a, a what I call a foo-foo trainer <laughs> that likes all this breakaway stuff and thinks it's humane for your horses and all this kind of crap. But it's not. It's it ends up if, if you have breakaway stuff, it ends up being not humane in the long run because when you're first training that wild horse, you do not want him to think that he can break free. That that's just disaster coming. So you rather him get snubbed up and learn how to yield to that new situation, but there's a way to handle it where he's not getting in trouble. Too much. <laughs> Just enough where he learns. So, um, so I think I got some in here. Now I usually keep these things just for example. Oh no, wait. Okay, so I do have, now I do use these halters, but they have, um, actually it's all in here. Anyway. I got stuff everywhere. Okay. Hi. <laughs> so we'll find another spot. So here is one, and then there's one over there on the ground. So, yeah, that would be a good little view there. Cause there's our Mustang Corral. So this, now we're over here at the six foot high fence, our little Mustang country corral and does it read forwards or backwards to you? It looks backwards to me. <laughs> now that corral has been put through the tests. Let me tell you, it has. <laughs> it has definitely been put through the tests. Um, Stangs have been kicking that thing and I know it's a tough cookie because, yeah, <laughs> it's forwards to you, okay. Um, all right, so I got a couple examples here. I don't know if I like that sun on me, but maybe, maybe over here, trailer. <laughs> oh, and here, I guess since we're here at the trailer, so there's a trailer back door with a step up and it's just a stock trailer inside. In fact, it has a divider, but I never use it. I don't believe in them. <laughs> it's just more stuff to cause problems. Okay. Let's see. The, the ground uh, changes the angles, so. <clears throat> okay, a little bit better, I think. For me, anyway. <laughs> the sun's not in my eyes. Okay. <clears throat> no, wait. Now I'm in that. <laughs> this way. <laughs> Just kidding. This camera thing's entertaining enough, right? <laughs> Once you get a spot, you're like, oh no. <laughs> New situation. Okay, I think we got it. Okay, <laughs> so back to halters, and I think my notes, do they go in my pocket or? I 
think they got left at the car now. That's okay. <laughs> All right, so tell me, I'm gonna do a little quiz first. I'm not gonna give you the answer. So tell me, just based off the few little things that I've said already, kind of hustling around a little bit here, tell me which one would be the one I would use for getting my Mustang. Now this situation right here isn't ideal, but I'll, I'll get into that later. But let's just look at these parts actually, I'll take that off. So these are the halters. I think. So we have choice, we'll say this is choice A. We'll just do one at a time. Choice A. <laughs> Looks like this, and you got your little hardware on there and your buckle that tightens it and all your little fasteners and things and adjustments. And basically it's nylon with rings and a buckle. So this is your web halter. So that's choice A. Then we got choice B, this one. So this is your rope halter. And it's just made out of one continuous string of rope with a um, little decoration on it on the nose band and this is our I think I'm getting in frame this is our rope halter so which one of those two would be Monica approved he says B <laughs> coffee and crate says B so this was a this is B B you guys are doing good <laughs> good students in here <laughs> okay so B B B yep yep Jenny Crystal chooses A. <laughs> Most everybody chooses B. Okay, so going with the things I said, which one was approved by BLM though? Uh, either. So BLM doesn't care. BLM doesn't care which one. You can use either one. It's, it's what makes you more successful and what will be less trouble in the long run. And it depends on which horse you get. I mean, if it's a baby horse, this one would be fine if it's the baby size, because it's whatever, ice cream. <laughs> okay, so everybody's making guesses. Good, everybody made a guess, um, whether you're new or not. So this one, this was choice B. So this is a rope halter, and I would choose this one over this one. I can show you one in the shed there <laughs> that a Mustang has broke. Broke, let me think, where, here. See this clip? Bam, flew off right here, these joints, broken these types of halters. I've seen them break, seen them get ruined, useless in that kind of situation. So when you are brand new training a Mustang, this rope halter will never, ever, ever break. So it's just one continuous piece right there. I always got kind of like a green color going on around here because that's kind of our theme. <laughs> and so you want your rope halter for sure. That's not gonna break. And it doesn't have, now, if you hold it like this, in that case, B and A. <laughs> now, feeling it, if you hear it is like, close your eyes and hold this. Now, when you first get your, what if you have a quarter horse? <laughs> so, now think about it. When you get first get your, oh, questions are coming in. Plus the pressure points better on a rope halter for training, yes. Yes, which goes into what I'm gonna kind of say right here. So, <laughs> I'm getting tired holding this one. <laughs> this is heavy. This has got a lot of metal. It's got things that could poke and hurt and, you know, kind of like stuff. Um, you know, it's just bulky. Like, would you want to wear a piece of metal all the time? <laughs> As opposed to just a nice little rope. Like, I can wear my necklace here all the time. I, you know, it's just like a little piece of string. And so this is a lot lightweight and they're pretty easy to grab so you can just kind of grab a hold of that or just touch it or whatever and get your horse's attention. And that kind of brings me to the rope which I don't want to waste too much time but we'll just use our imagination for this part. <clears throat> so you definitely want your rope halter. It's a lot more lightweight, less obtrusive, never breaks. Rope halter. <laughs> okay, now we got this one over here. Let me, let me hang this Okay, so this is, you also want a lead. Um, I don't have the lead out here that I like to use. I like to use one that kind of got broken and I had to saw off and rescue a horse. <laughs> so I like to use this one that kind of, when it dangles off the horse's face, he doesn't step on it. 
and it's just enough for me where I can kind of like when I get close enough to the horse just kind of run my hand underneath the rope and just kind of play with that a little bit and then just see if he'll kind of guide in with that instead of having to step on it and have too much hanging from him and stuff so I use that and then so I don't know if I can get this whole rope in here, but it's just a rope. <laughs> Here's your imagination. It's a rope. Okay. This one's probably about a nine foot rope, I think, but that's not too important. What's important is this and here. So on here, it's very stiff, but I think I can. Okay. So it comes undone. So we can get these clips off. So you just kind of feed it through here. It's stiff. <laughs> stiff, but it's doable. When you're a ranch girl. <laughs> okay, it's happening. It's coming. Okay, so we just, we can get these clips off. So I don't like to use the clips because these things also break. The springs break. They catch on buckets. It causes problems. So when you get your new Mustang, take your clip off. No, nope. I think it's gonna have to go the other way. <laughs> anyway, just use your magic. So you got your eye, eye knot here. So it's your, your eye. So that goes onto your halter. So now when this goes on the horse's face, it kind of goes like this, <laughs> horse nose. <laughs> and then under here is where the rope clips too. <laughs> I know I'm a good demo. <laughs> okay, so that's where that goes. And then, all right, so this is where the, the this connects. So it's really simple. You just feed it through, feed it through something. I've actually, I have to play with it sometimes, I forget. <laughs> but there's a way to attach it and I think you just feed it through, through the. Now there's one way not to do it and that's kind of the way I'm thinking of right now because I feel like a little bit on the spot being live and trying to not take forever like fiddling around with the rope. <laughs> but I'll get it again, it just takes me a second. But the way you don't want to do it, so I'll show you what not to do. Because <laughs> it's really hard to get untone. It's possible, but it's hard. So I just fed it through, right? Like if, if I, sometimes I think of things later, I'm like, oh yeah, but uh, not right now. <laughs> so you, you, what you don't want to do is feed it through and then come back over here and feed it through and then pull it tight. So you can imagine this rope is really, really stiff. So it's, it's going, okay. So you don't want to like feed it through and then like, like noose it around that piece too tight. There's another way to do it. I have to like look it up. I don't know why. But this is what not to do. Because it will get really hard. Hashtag horse piercing. Yeah. <laughs> so this will get really hard to get undone. So I'm just kind of showing you a little bit what I'm meaning here. So that will be hard to get undone. But basically what I want you to do is, or what is good to do, is don't use your clips because because if you're kind of swinging around your rope and stuff, your new Mustang, you don't want to like hit him in the chin and stuff like that. You know, you're going to be nice to him. I mean, he's going to be a wild guy in the beginning. So <laughs> there can be moments and you don't want him like, you know, moving his head around and whacking himself with that, that clip and stuff. So um, just keep the rope on the rope and that will never break. So you won't have problems with this situation, except the way I did it here. Don't do that. <laughs> it just gets, it, it can be undone, but it's just hard. It's not totally wrong, but I'll have to figure out <laughs> that. <laughs> Since it's live, I can't edit and be like, oh yeah, this way. Take another 10 years figuring it out again. <laughs> it's been a while. But anyway, so that's the halter situation. <laughs> Don't leave clips on the ground. You'll forget and then they get buried. <laughs> okay, so let's go back and find my notes because I know I had some <laughs> and let's see some horses some more because they're they love those bushes over there <laughs> you guys are doing really really good I'm, I'm happy you guys got so many good guesses and figuring this out I think I left the notes over here it must have been my pocket unless I put it in the trailer it's kind of like a feeling of being yeah, maybe it put it in the trailer I don't know <laughs> it's like a feeling of being spread thin just a little bit because you like go here and there here and there and then you're like I don't know <laughs> so any questions so far 
on Mustangs. Any um, curiosities that we didn't go over? <laughs> Horsey, horsies. Yeah, so, okay, I found my notes, I think. <laughs> It's when I was getting the halter and then I set it down on the bucket in there. Okay, back in business. <laughs> we'll go back to see horses. <laughs> and we're doing good. So I got enough content today. Yay! <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny is I never know <laughs> what kind of content we're gonna have <laughs> until like this, I mean, we're just going live. Like, all right, here it is. <laughs> So this is awesome. Okay, so we got some cool little landscapers. Little Birdie told me one day you are going to do a how to tie a rope halter lesson. Mm -hmm. I have to learn first. <laughs> but I could show you the different ways to put it on. Okay, so, wow, I can't believe this. Yeah, that'd be cool. We could do like a, a live, uh, make a rope halter session. And so you guys would have to do a little preparation if you want to follow along. And we could post your results on Instagram or something or Twitter. And we could see what kind of halters you guys made. And so I do have some ideas for that. I, it may not be a halter, but I want to make a bridle. So I want my students to make their own bridles because we can make uh, bitless bridles and we can make um, the head stall that goes for it and the reins. So that, that is definitely something I've been hardcore thinking of. So you're on the right track there. <laughs> and then you can pick any color you want. So if you want to prepare ahead of time, if you're thinking about things like I do. <laughs> yeah, I'm in California. Sorry if I'm missing any chats because it goes by really fast on the setup. So <laughs> they all got too claustrophobic. <laughs> Okay, so I'm trying to find a good little angle here. To... Is that sun shiny? Yeah, so uh, to prepare ahead of time to make the bridle, I want to do it out of paracord. <laughs> and so you can go on Amazon and I might link that stuff later too, because I kind of mentioned it here. So like there's really cool choices on Amazon if you like Amazon, but they have lots of stuff over there. And I saw like bazillions of of uh, colors, something spooked them. Yeah, it, um, so they're really sticker bushes around here and they kind of got a little claustrophobic and they were like, ah, too close. And they're kind of spooking each other because they didn't want to get kicked by each other. <laughs> so they just ran. It's just too claustrophobic in there. Okay, so you got a Troy right there, <laughs> Troy dinosaur. So yeah, if you want to prepare ahead of time, get to pick your color of paracord and stuff. Um, I'm gonna do that next time, so I, sh I should figure that out. I've been thinking about it for like a month now. You're gonna make 550 cord one. Yeah, so the cord's not too too thick. I'll post, I'll link all like the stuff. So for the next video, I think we'll try it. I have to just see like how long deliveries take because all this pandemic, it's like I have to get cord two. So we'll see how that goes. But I think you can get it also at the hardware store, just any color. Like it won't be as extensive colors as like on Amazon, <laughs> but they have like the orange and green and stuff like that. So I think you can just practice with that and, and start making them. So I'll, I'll link that stuff and that'd be pretty cool. And then if we do a rope halter one, I haven't decided. If we do that, <laughs> then you're gonna want a nice softer rope that ties knots well so nothing nylon because nylon is slippery so cotton is best so if you want a, a more like a uh, rope with more cotton than like fake material in it something that's soft and not too wiry because the wiry ones slip and that ruins your whole thing so that's kind of what you want <laughs> oh 50, 550s aka paracord okay yeah so that would be for for the halters and the reins and the bitless bridles stuff. So let's go back to the Mustangs. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you got questions and you want content, tell me, tell me. I will be happy to make stuff because I hope to do these enough it starts getting traction and I don't have to be like, hmm, what do they want to know today? <laughs> but I think this is good content for our channel because we're about Mustangs and I, I think this needs to be done on our channel. It's like, this is what we teach. 
Okay, so let's see. Ah, this one's important. Okay, so we got our our facility, our trailer, our halter. We know what to have. <laughs> hey, our <laughs> I see you. <laughs> And now, okay, now you made your appointment. You're going to go out there, pick up a Mustang, or you're looking at the online adoption events and stuff like that. And you're like, hmm, which one's my horse? You know, you're all excited. You're like, I'm going to get my Mustang. And so now you got to find like what, so the question would be, um, so when picking out a Mustang at Holden facility, uh, oh yeah. So what things to look for in a Mustang? So personally, when I go to look for a Mustang, I observe how that horse is in the herd. So <laughs> we, we see a lot of herd dynamics here if you guys hang out on my other channel, which I think a few of you are from that channel. And um, so you see a little bit about like who's pushy, who's nice, who's stuff. And we have a lot of favorites that like Miss, here I'll turn it over here. A lot of people like that one right there. <laughs> That's Mustang Sally and she is the most sweetest, docile, submissive horse ever and everything and she was just so sweet and almost really good with people right away. Actually, let's turn over there. And so you want to look for a horse like that and so you, oh, I missed your comment there. It went way too fast. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> and so uh, yeah, so I like to look for a horse that's not dominating. So when it, last time I went and looked for a horse, or one of the times, <laughs> I, uh, I called this group of mares, one of them that was in there, the boss mare in there, I called her Cardi B. <laughs> so I don't know if you know who Cardi B is, but she's just like, boss, <laughs> like the boss <laughs> from the, you know, New York Bronx. <laughs> and so this horse was just like, teeth bearing attack mode, full attack mode on the other horses. And I was like, we're not bringing home no Cardi B. <laughs> yeah, I think I like this angle cause I don't like the sun on my eyes. It's hard. Okay, so I'd rather have back to the sun. Yeah, so we don't want no, no Cardi B <laughs> horse. And I have a lot of nicknames for things, especially horses or people and stuff, depending on their personality. So we, we don't want to bring back boss mare. That's just personally me. Maybe you do. <laughs> um, but you don't want to bring back the horse that is super timid. And Sailor was kind of that horse. I wouldn't have chose him. Um, I wouldn't have chose him based off of his presence because he was brought into the corral and he was with another horse. There was, I picked two ice cream. <laughs> okay, so she's just a, a kind of a person with a lot of attitude, kind of a thing, the Cardi B person. So we don't want to have a lot of attitude horse, basically. So Sailor was kind of the afraid horse. So he was with the two picks that I was going to run him up against. And I picked him based off of his height, <laughs> but not off of his persona. He was a little bit more afraid than the other one. But the other one was... Um, a little bit more brave. He wasn't spooking at things on the other side of the fence. He was just kind of running around and stuff like that. So I would pick them based off of their herd behaviors. I don't want one super timid. And I've heard of horses like, you know, sometimes they're people friendly and they come up to the fence even though they're completely wild and they might nibble on your clipboard. <laughs> so there's those situations. So you kind of want to look for a more easygoing one. Um, not that the other ones aren't workable. That would be me. So that and one who, who doesn't scare easily. Goldilocks horse, just right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and um, oh, and then based off of age. So a good age to get a horse is um, just depends on where you want to start it. Like Juno is the best age because she's a baby horse. So if you got time and you just wanna grow with your horse and just have like the best horse, get a baby horse. <laughs> if you wanna have a horse to ride soon, get one. That's kind of like four going on five, like Sailor. So he's he's rideable, he's riding soon. Um, we're gonna get back on business with him. My hip's feeling good today. So one went like that. I got Sally, age five, she was perfect. So that's a good age. You can get them older, but I would uh, do that if you're more experienced and also again, if you have more time. <laughs> Um, but they may surprise you. 
don't know. And then gender, like what kind of gender do you want? And also um, how long they've been in the holding corral. So like Sailor, <laughs> he's been in the corral for a year before I got him. So he wasn't like brand new to the corral situation, but they did not fix him, <laughs> geld him until a month before I got him. So I basically brought home a wild stallion. <laughs> Did you have enough riders since the pandemic? Yeah, we, we have we have handful or two handfuls. Hawks. <laughs> we have a couple handfuls uh, coming out here a week, so that's enough for me and my horses. <laughs> but yeah, so that was before pandemic. Hopefully we're coming out of that. <laughs> Everybody's itching for it, I know. Um oh, and then another thing you want to look for is confirmation so confirmation is how well they're built like the straight lines the slopes to their hip and the angles of their neck you kind of want one with a longer neck well balanced <laughs> um, a more uphill looking horse sailor is the perfect example of that he went over there but he's a perfect example of that and he's got the the perf like he doesn't look too mustangy as you would say he looks more thoroughbred with a long neck, a sloped croup, and long stretching legs, <laughs> and a nice, nice stride. So you want to look for straightness, no bent at the hooves kind of a thing, no twisted legs or something like that. You hit your foot, oh no, ow. <laughs> sometimes we need hooves, don't we? I wish I had hooves sometimes. <laughs> um, and yeah, the history, so like how long have they been in the corral? would add factors and oh like if they were born there too so sometimes the horses get born there so they don't know wild too much and their babies and they end up being really good too so yeah <laughs> so any questions are you guys all ready to go get a mustang now <laughs> make a herd a herd like uh oh wait he's going to the potty we don't we won't live view that <laughs> could show you sailor's confirmation. So I think that's it. That's actually all the stuff I had in my notes on things to do, you know, how to get a Mustang and stuff. And I think that covers a heck of a lot. And if people were gonna have questions, I think that's like most of the questions. So actually I might save you guys from this tripod now and we'll just kind of go around. You want one like Sally? <laughs> Not a bad choice. All right, close your eyes guys for one second. I'll tell you when you can open them. And then we'll hit the pinata. <laughs> okay, you're good. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna turn this around. And we'll look at this horse. <clears throat> I know he's kind of standing there grazing. Sally's so great, and he's a good boy too. He's really, really, really wonderful. So you can see his long kind of neck, and he's got that s sloped hip, and he's walking away. He's like, you can't, you can't see me. <laughs> He's got a nice bones too. <laughs> yeah, Coffee and Crate here actually rides Sally. So, yeah. Coffee and Crate has ridden Sally all over the mountains, the beaches, and the dunes. And we actually have a video of her on our channel riding Sally. And it's, I think, Aria's beach adventure. So she... <laughs> she says, leave me alone. <laughs> But uh, she has nice confirmation also. She has that nice sloped uh, rear end. And she's... Oh, <laughs> Robert, you want one like Sailor. <laughs> He's handsome. Yes. I, I, I want one like all of them. <laughs> you love Sally so much. So is Sailor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's... She, so... Yeah, Ars learned all her horsemanship skills with Sally, and she's ridden Juno, and she's ridden Troy, and she's done lots of fun stuff with all these horses here. And we've been all over the mountains and done lots of adventures, this young gal. Yep, Pismo. <laughs> um, enjoy being, you can link her video. Waves wand. Whee! <laughs> Poof, <laughs> poof, the horses are in your backyard. 
<laughs> so this is entertaining enough. Um, now I do want to apologize. Now I swear about this is Sailor in view. Okay, so this is Sailor. <laughs> he kind of cornered himself again. So I was trying to show you guys him. Actually, I can crawl through this fence and get a nice view. So let's do that. There we go. There's Sailor. There we go. So he's kind of in the shadows, but you can see he's a beautiful boy. He's a beautiful boy. Itchy. <laughs> so they get a little bit, um, if you had one big backyard. <laughs> well, see, this isn't my land either. We're stinking lucky to be able to be here and find a place to rent like this. <clears throat> but it's possible. It's like where there's a will, there's a way. Look at all of them lined up. Sailor, Troy, Juno. No. Yes, Juno and Sally's kind of right there in between. <laughs> but he's got a nice long neck, a beautiful head, handsome, nice long straight legs, a nice back, good length back, nice sloped hip, which makes a, a nice stride. What, what, oh wait, what? <laughs> what are we missing? Yeah, these, these are my friends from my other channel, um, Coffee and Crete. Squirrels. You see the squirrel down there? There you go. <laughs> my back is getting the ice. You're all right. So this, this um, little stripe on him is his coloration and we call that a dun. But yeah, he's a fun boy to ride. I think he would be really good with endurance or something like that because he just loves to move down that trail. So I think it's funny how they're all in here. <laughs> Yeah, so my other channel is Geode. My daughter and I are planning on homesteading on big property with two tiny houses. Awesome. Yeah, I think she did a report on... Did you ever do your report, Coffee and Crete, on your um, Mustangs, the grassland horse the animals? Yeah, a done is a coloration. <laughs> Here we don't see rear ends this time, we see front ends. <laughs> yeah, so Coffee and Create and her mom uh, come here and get to see the Shire and see horses and do all the fun stuff with me here live in person. <laughs> and they know all about Mustangs all the time. And, I, and we definitely turn on people on the Mustangs around here. Troy, Troy, he's not a Mustang, but he is a Mustang advocate as a horse. <laughs> so he's surrounded by uh, uh, his buddies who are all Mustangs. <laughs> and that's so cool. I got my first super chat this time around. That was so unexpected. I'm glad it works. <laughs> just, just to know. I know, we'll get back to it, girl. We'll get back to it. We, we ride them on the beach every week, so they're getting their, their outings. <laughs> Sailor needs to get out. Oh, your Mustang looks like that bay done nice. So when you say he looks like this, it, uh, does he have like a long neck um, or just the coloring? And he's kind of a taller of the two Mustangs. These ones are more like 14 two hands. And this one's more like 14.3. Send a picture of it. Wait, I missed a couple chats. There's some hawks happening right now. Oh, I don't know if you can see them way up there. Hawks. <laughs> Chasing. Yeah, that's me. I can't believe how much these plants have gone down. So that's cool. We actually have a Mustang person here watching. A Jenny. <laughs> Shout out to a Mustang owner besides Monica over here showing all these, <laughs> this little herd here. And for some reason I end up with brown ones. 
brownish ones. Same coloring, but shorter neck, more Spanish style. Okay. And which uh, HMA? I didn't talk about that, actually. Um, HMA means herd management area. And that means the specific region that they were uh, living in before they were captured. So Juno was actually born on facility. She was born in the California Ridge Crest Corrals. And yeah, you love him. <laughs> What's your Mustang's name, Jenny? And Sally was from uh, Fish Lake Valley, Nevada. And he was from Nevada Wild Horse Range near some kind of like Air Force Base. And they also call it Nellis. So Sailor was from Nellis in Nevada. Other livestock have the HMA, do, do they? He's from Sentinel CA. Oh, okay. Huh. So you're, are, you must be California too? I'm going to live here soon. Okay. Lakota. Oh, that's a good name. Yeah, so these guys, Juno, you know, she was born 2006. Sally was born 2010. He was born, I have to double check. <laughs> but he's like four or five years old. So how, how many years ago? I think his brand says 2015. <laughs> so it's not too bad here with flies, just a little bit. But this stuff kind of smells like a pumpkin patch. <laughs> a little bit. I can't believe how quick everything died in a week. And we had like one rain not too long ago. Okay, so you are in California. Cool. Hey, that's rare. <laughs> now, how did you get your Mustang? Was it, which option was it? Did you train them yourself? Did you get them from a tip trainer? Did you get them from an auction? Like a from the prison program or um, a friend or just a, a good Mustang that was a horse to be sold. <laughs> I mean, you could get in that way too. Let's see, I wonder if I can go in here. Ow. Be like a lizard on this rock. <laughs> I mean, not a rock, it's a log. <laughs> it's kind of got spikes on it. Ooh. There you go. Aerial, sort of aerial of horses. <laughs> Your guy's brand didn't come out on him. Oh, they retried, it's still bad. Yeah, so Sally didn't have a retry, but she's missing two numbers on the end. <laughs> With a Mustang, can you train them from the wild like the Brumbies in Australia? Yes, yeah, so that's what we've done here. I've trained all these wild things. I've trained more than this, but these are my horses. So we're just stuck in COVID world right now where we're not able to do a whole lot with our program because of social distancing. But um, <laughs> we're happy. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're just on pause. <laughs> but yeah, that's what we did with this. He was the last one we trained from the wild and also another little horse that I sold to a student last year and she was cute her name was star but um if I can climb climb through and he won't run away um because it is like a sticker patch I'll show you sailor's brand because he also has something similar it doesn't look bad it looks more like a racing stripe to me but they also had to rebrand him too <laughs> So sometimes the brains don't come out right. Just, just, we're just checking out your beauty. Your beauty mark. Here, get a sailor kiss. Sailor kiss. <laughs> okay, so right there. So it has the double, the double line and it's a little bit smeared on that line. <laughs> so on his paper it says possible rebrand. Stop munching there. So he's got kind of two, but it, I think it's readable. <laughs> the, 
Now Juno has a perfect one because she was a baby. Let's see if we can peek through the... Don't step on me. Hey Juno. Raven too, yeah, we, we adopted, uh, we sold Raven. Look at this cutie. He's cute. Cute. <laughs> Just in case y'all want to be surrounded by horses today. <laughs> I was gonna say that sometimes the brands don't come out just right, yeah. But this one, Juno has a perfect example. If we can ow, get close enough in the lighting right, hers is like perfect. And she got it when she was a baby. And she didn't move much, obviously. That one's pretty perfect. And she got a little cute one because she was a baby when she got it. And maybe on my next live, we can talk about how to read those. Oh wait, I just, saw how to read chat oh i didn't know i could scroll it learning hashtag learning <laughs> i know how to read chat when it disappears now <laughs> takes three times three <laughs> and sally's right here there you go <laughs> there's trey right there there's some music over there. <laughs> hey, Sally. Here, you get a Sally kiss. Coffee and create kisses. <laughs> Touch the screen and scroll it. Ah, duh. <laughs> Figured that out. <laughs> oh, MG, I didn't know until just now when I accidentally touched the screen. <laughs> You never know with these things, like you accidentally touch something and then you end the whole stream by accident or you find out something worthy. <laughs> and the wind isn't bad right now, so this is cool. So here's a horse. Ah! You got him from Redlands facility. He picked you, aw. Picked out a tip trainer and had him personally trained for riding. Okay. So you did two options, actually. How do they put brands on? Oh, good question. So the, the uh, brand is a freeze brand and they use like their little thing. So they put in the different numbers. So each one of these represent different numbers and we can go into like how to read it and stuff later. We'll do that on another one because I'll, I'll bring information. But uh, they put it on with uh, dry ice. So they stick the brand in dry ice and they freeze it on there. And the freeze brands, you'll know the difference between a freeze brand and a hot brand when it, you see that it has grown in white. So if it's grown in white, that was a freeze brand. Hot brand will be just a burnt scar. <laughs> It'll just be a scar with no fur growing back. So the freeze brand, they still grow back fur, but it's just like, it was kind of like a wound and then it grew back fur. Okay, I'm surrounded by stickers now. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trapped. <laughs> I'm trapped. I have to... Um, we've been live a whole lot longer than we ever done. We're having fun. <laughs> but yeah, these sticker bushes keep the pretty occupied when the grass dies and stuff. Because otherwise it just turns to dirt. I like freeze brand instead of burn yeah it's better yeah so so Jenny you did Redlands um, maybe that's how you got to my channel because I did a video on Mustang adoption in Redlands and that video went viral <laughs> because of the, the poor guy how he was um, loading into the trailer and I wasn't trying to show like um, the horse going through a hard time I was just trying to show like document the Redlands adoption so I was down there uh, one time just to you know I was going around and checking out different adoption places and seeing how that was going and I was more like doing like a news report just basically reporting that there was one horse that got adopted out of the whole day the whole adoption event and I was interviewing the people there and uh, that were you know the BLM people that came from Ridgecrest <laughs> and uh, 
they said, yeah, there used to be trucks lined up down the road, wrapping around to the other side <laughs> with the trailers picking up wild horses. And that day it was just one horse getting adopted. So I was just filming the one horse that got adopted, but he ended up trembling in the, in the cage and knocking around a little bit before they loaded him. But that's a video to see just kind of like how it is because it's a wild horse, but then a bunch of people don't understand what's happening <laughs> and they think, oh, it needs to be trained and all this and handled and but I'm like, it, it got a home. You don't understand. <laughs> so, but that was a Redlands adoption video I had. <laughs> they went viral. I don't know how, but that's how we are able to go live today because of that one video that went viral, like, let's see, seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> which got me subscribers <laughs> so now we're we're picking up the channel so I've been doing these lives this is our third live stream on this channel um, and we're doing one a week so we're doing Wednesdays at 4 p.m. this week and uh, so next week we will get into a little bit more about some Mustang facts I think and then we'll see if we can do that um, macrame stuff so I think doing some projects would be pretty fun so it'll help horsemanship and just horse people overall and be some fun and we can build a little community doing those projects. So, and also if you guys, let me say hi. And if you guys have questions or ideas for more content, things that you wanna see on the channel, um, please put it in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed, I don't know which way we are backwards, subscribe, bell button, you'll get notified when we're live and when I post videos and I hope to post like a random video of something I come up with per week plus going live once a week so we'll see two stuff per week is the plan now look at you on here and D live yeah so now you got got two places to go to crystal so when we uh, go live on D live it's just more casual and we're just kind of hanging out doing whatever stuff so but here it's a little bit more um, advocate <laughs> if that's a word <laughs> so anyways and and uh, same horses though <laughs> same me but uh yeah so we'll have a lot of fun and I think we're gonna make it a wrap because my my phone's saying we're gonna run out of charge soon and uh, I know we had a lot of fun and I think I didn't miss anything so we did our announcements and I saw Jenny out here, so I hope to see you out here again. We can talk Mustangs and stuff. If you got questions or anything like that, put it down there because it'll give me ideas for content and I definitely got a lot to share. So yeah, <laughs> this is a start. <laughs> so great to meet you. Great to see you all from other channels and students that pop in. in. And if you guys are watching replay, yay, give it the thumbs up because uh, it really helps out the video on uh, YouTube ranking and all that kind of stuff because Yay. <laughs> so I hope you guys have a beautiful day and you got to enjoy the horses. There they are in the bushes <laughs> and we'll do more stuff. And um, yeah, so have an excellent day. We'll see you around. <laughs> Horse goes. <laughs> and I have to figure out how to turn this off because I didn't figure that out last time. I think I had to turn it around. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it around and then do this because I have to figure out so we're able to turn it off. But Anyways, love you guys, much love, and we'll see you next time, next week, 4 p.m. Wednesday, California time.